In this Russell Talk news, Becky Lynch may be nearing a return, Carl Anderson is caught in a scheduling conflict, Luke's review of Raw, and more. Subscribe and enable notifications to Always On for daily wrestling news videos. Support Wrestle Talk! It has been two months since Becky Lynch challenged Bianca Belair for the Raw Women's Championship at SummerSlam, a match that, while great, did have unfortunate repercussions for big time Bex. Lynch separated her shoulder during the match, announcing that she would be forced to take time off the next night on Raw. Now we have a new update as to the status of Lynch's WWE return. Dave Meltzer reported in the Wrestling Observer Newsletter that Lynch was backstage at the October 3rd Raw in St. Paul, Minnesota, and that there was talk that she could be returning to the company, quote unquote, soon. The recovery time for a separated shoulder is typically not as long as many other injuries, so it may well be approaching the time for the man to come back around. Considering the influx of new stars in WWE's women's division, i.e. Candice LeRae, Dakota Kai, Io Sky, and the returning Bayley, adding Becky Lynch back into the mix could only lead to exciting possibilities. Many fans, myself included, were shocked to see New Japan Pro Wrestling star and never open weight champion Carl Anderson return to Raw alongside Dr. Luke Gallows last week. It hasn't exactly been in WWE's nature to play well with others, and now there may already be an issue with Anderson's dual schedule. The Machine Gun is currently scheduled to defend the Never Openweight Championship against Gorilla of Destiny Hikaleo at New Japan's Battle Autumn event on November 5th, a date he was scheduled for prior to his WWE return. Said return, however, has placed that match in doubt. As announced last night on Raw, Anderson is now scheduled to team up with Gallows and AJ Styles to face Judgment Day at Crown Jewel, also scheduled to take place November 5th. PW Insider has correctly pointed out that Riyadh and Osaka are separated by a 16-hour flight, and with Osaka being six hours ahead of Saudi Arabia, it would be impossible for Anderson to do both shows. SmackDown has the whole world in its hands. Well, at least the bigger share of the US's eyeballs on its product, as Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics has reported the viewership figures for Friday's episode of SmackDown that saw the return of Bray Wyatt. The October 14th SmackDown drew 2.274 million viewers, a slight increase from the previous week's 2.243 million viewers, with the all-important chocolate-covered Prime demo standing pat, remaining at an 0.54 rating, the same as it was the previous week. SmackDown featured the heavily advertised return of Bray Wyatt in the event and also saw Raw star Rey Mysterio return to SmackDown where he can escape the torment of his tall son. And now before our hot tag to Luke for Raw, here's a hot tag to Ollie Davis for this video's sponsor. Before we get on with the rest of the episode, I'd just like to say a huge thank you to this video's sponsor, Established Titles. An amazing gift that not only makes your name officially awesome, but also helps save the world. Here's how it works. If you buy an Established Title Pack, you become the proud owner of at least one square foot of dedicated land on a private estate in the mythical world of Scotland. Your certificate will feature a unique plot number, which will even let you see the exact location. And thanks to a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds, that means you could officially change your name to a lord or lady, putting it on credit cards, dating profiles, even royalty-themed wrestler gimmicks. Bow down before me, Marks! And the first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link below will effectively be next to my plot! We can build our own WrestleTalk kingdom! Where I'm still in charge. But here's the best part. It's not just for the lols. Established Titles plants a tree with every order, working with global charities One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to help support global reforestation efforts. You can actually hear Drew McIntyre swing every time a tree is saved. It makes a great last minute gift, especially with established titles running an early Black Friday sale. And if you use the code WrestleTalk, you get an additional 10% off. Go to establishedtitles.com forward slash WrestleTalk now to get your gifts and help support the channel. And do it quick to get next to my plot. Lord that lord. Or lady that lady. And now it's time for my review of Monday Night Raw, AKA Brock Lesnar wore a Slayer t-shirt, so it's show of the year edition of Monday Night Raw in about five minutes. The show opened rather chaotically with Bobby Lashley halfway through a promo calling out Brock Lesnar. It probably made you sit up in your chair, making sure that you tuned into the right show at the right time, as it feels like you sort of missed something. But you know, 
in a good way. Out came Brockles in said Slayer t-shirt, and I bet him and Damien Priest had a great chat about whether or not South of Heaven is the best Slayer album. It is, by the way. And the two had a brilliant brawl around ringside. Initially, it was Brock in control, but Lashley took over and speared him through the barricade and put him through the announcer's table. Hundreds of security and locker room geeks came out to break up the fight, and it was later announced that the two will face off at Crown Jewel. It was an awesome way to start Raw, giving it that can't-miss TV vibe. Look, you can't do this every week, but it's awesome when you do. And I'll be honest, on paper, Brock vs. Bobby has big shrug energy for me, but this angle got me pumped for their match. So for me at least, it was an unmitigated success. Speaking of successes, the Good Brothers, now back to being the OC, California! won a simple and formulaic tag match against Alpha Academy. This was exactly what it needed to be. It reintroduced the OC to the WWE audience and it gave them a convincing win over an established team in Alpha Academy. I really like watching Gallows and Anderson wrestle, but I obviously hate them because they stole our Quizzlemania Tag Team Championships. Oh yeah, everyone's wanging on about the Never Overweight Championship, but what about our Quizzlemania Tag Title, guys? What about us? What about Quizzlemania? The best act on Raw, and yes I am being serious, Judgment Day came out to cut a promo and a six-man tag was made for Crown Jewel and AJ Styles vs. Subanik Mysterio was announced for later tonight. After a recap of him winning his title last week, Seth Rollins cut a usual Seth Rollins promo and that isn't a bad thing. Although he had a match with Matt Riddle later on in the main event, Mustafa Ali came out to battle words with him. This was an interesting little segment. Ali's match with Bobby Lashley a few weeks ago didn't quite land as it should have done and I think some of that was reflected in this crowd reaction. Ali didn't get much of a pop when he came out. He was given the what chance during his promo when he wasn't being met with abject silence, but by the end of the segment, the crowd were pretty into it. Even though they cheered and sang Rollins' theme song when he laid Ali out, his recovery and battle back got a decent reaction. And by the end of the show, when Ali attacked Rollins again, the crowd was super into him. This is the strength of Rollins being the US champion and how great both are as workers. This short segment did more for Ali than the match the other week, and I'm so pleased about that. Bianca Belair teamed with Candice LeRae to take on Damage Control and lost when Belair distracted herself by brawling with Bailey on commentary. They announced that they'll have a match on Raw next week. Cora Jade asked Rhea Ripley to be her poison for tonight's NXT. I love the interconnectivity between NXT, Raw, and SmackDown. Thanks, Triple H. But then we got a big Raw return. You see, on SmackDown, it was revealed that Rey Mysterio had transferred to the blue brand because the sight of his son being metaphorically pegged by a Rhea Ripley was distressing. So he tucked his tail between his mask and set sail for the land of Fox, which means we got a trade. Now I've lost a wrestler in Rey Mysterio that I really like watching wrestle, so who did we get to replace him? Was it Drew McIntyre? Was it Gunther? Was it LA Knight? Was it Ricochet? No, it was Baron Corbin! Dagnamit! Baron Corbin may have got his first name back, but he's still Happy Corbin with his terrible graphics, stupid hat and crap gear. But he does have a JBL now, so at least he can do the promos, even though Corbin was actually an effective mid-card heel promo, so don't know what we're changing there. The pairing is pretty good, and JBL's new gimmick of you wouldn't have made the cut in the Astrude era could lead to some fun feuds. He called Baron Corbin the modern day wrestling god and called out Dolph Ziggler so the pair could have a match. Dolph Ziggler versus Baron Corbin feels very 2017. And we all remember 2017. <laughs> But despite my pessimism, which was running high on a Dolph Ziggler vs Baron Corbin match, this was actually pretty darn good. And although they were very quiet at the start, the crowd really got into the near falls at the end. The match was given time, which certainly helped, and Dolph did his best to make Corbin look as big and as powerful as possible. The interplay with JBL and Corey Graves on commentary was also fun as they yuck yuck healed it up, and Corbin won with the end of days. Corbin is a very good mid-card heel, so as long as you keep him in that ballpark and you don't push him beyond his means, 
like they did in 2019, this could be a decent little mid-card act. And then we got AJ Styles versus Dominic Mysterio, which was also pretty good. And Dom got the shock win here following some distraction and interference from Mummy Rhea Ripley. The commentary did a good job of putting over what an upset this was for Styles, and it nicely built the feud. But speaking of feuds that aren't really going anywhere, Dexter Loomis and the Miz's match didn't actually happen when Miz attacks Loomis before the bell and it was called off. This was late. It feels more like WWE dragging their feet because they really don't know where this story is going. But there is a tease that Johnny Gargano knows something as he threatens to blow the whistle on the truth between Miz and Loomis if Miz doesn't admit to it first. It's the first big tease of this story which has been stalling for the last couple of months and hopefully, hopefully next week we'll see a good payoff for this. And by good payoff, I want Dexter Loomis to be revealed as the Miz's brother and they call him Dexter Loomis. Shout out to Charles Berg from the Rest Talk podcast viewership for that little gem. Hey look, Elias is back. And Ezekiel is, for sure, never coming back. As Elias basically said in his promo, I'm back to being Elias now. We're not doing that Vince McMahon silly storyline anymore. He tried to sing a song, but was interrupted by Matt Riddle who asked if Elias wanted to hit his bong. His bongos, that is. Yeah, it's, it's actually pretty funny. And Elias promised him a duet at some point down the line, but was interrupted again by Seth Rollins for the main event. And Rollins and Riddle had a damn fine main event, which ramped up to fifth gear immediately and never let up. They played off the finish of the fight pit a lot, with Rollins constantly trying to avoid the triangle choke. But some scuffles with Elias led to Rollins hitting Riddle with the stomp for the win. It was a neat finish as it adds Elias into the US title picture along with Riddle, and Ali makes four when he came down at the end to send Rollins running to close the show. All of a sudden, the US Championship has a storyline, something it's been missing in the Trips era and something Raw really needed when they don't have a World Championship. And not only does it have a storyline, it has fracturing storylines with Rollins and Ali and Riddle and Elias as commentary made it clear that Elias cost Riddle the US title due to his hot-headedness. To be honest, the majority of this show was broadly fine and mostly good, but the opening and closing were so great that even this quite missable episode felt like must-watch TV. So that's a massive thumbs up from me, and this week's Raw is 4 out of 5. In this Wrestle Talk news, major changes coming to WWE, a paper view cancelled, my big wrestling conspiracy theory, and more.